The film basement is filmed in sunny West Hartford, Connecticut, in front of a live studio Welcome audience. to the dankest, dirtiest episode of The Filmmaker's Basement. I'm Brandon. I'm Andrew. And we're going to be talking about some of the absolute shitters we saw last year, and <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> Uh, this, so last week we did our year in review of our favorite movies, and towards the end of the episode we both realized it'd be a very good idea to review some of the worst movies we saw last year, because uh, there were some bad ones. <laughs> there were some duds. There were definitely a lot of duds. Um, yeah. Definitely according to some critics as well. <laughs> That's how you know we're reliable. Mm -hmm. um so yeah we're gonna be going over some of the worst movies we saw last year in hopes that maybe we can avoid those this year here's hoping um and i think i'll start us off and i'm actually starting off with one that might be a bit more decisive than i originally realized and that is the cursed in 19th century france a man arrives in a remote country village to investigate an attack by a wild animal However, he soon discovers a much deeper and sinister force that has the manor and the townspeople in its grips. So I look back at my notes on this one, because I'll get to my main reason why I think this is one of the worst in a second. Um, but I actually thought it was good at the time. Like, it's I, I wrote down that it had some good ideas, it was very well shot, it had good atmosphere. The biggest issue with this movie is that it's entirely forgettable. <laughs> I was talking with you about this before we filmed last week. I didn't remember seeing this. Even when I saw it on my list of movies that I saw, I could not remember what this movie was about. And it's just because there's nothing special about it besides that. Like, it might be an all right movie on its own, but in comparison to everything I saw last year, it just left zero impact. Which for me, it has like rates pretty highly on the this was a kind of bad film. Because at least with like some of the really bad ones as we get towards the bottom of this list, like... They made me really angry watching them when I watched them for the first time. But this just left me with nothing. And that's kind of why it's fifth. Because it doesn't really deserve to be at the bottom with the rest of them. But, like, there's just not much to it. It was incredibly tropey. Um, especially with relying on, like, those tropes to get jump scares out of me. The pacing was incredibly slow. But, unfortunately, that pacing never really paid off with something meaningful. It just kind of left us meandering around hoping for a plot or some like payoff to materialize and it just never did. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I can't really put this further down because it really just doesn't belong there, but it's honestly worse than some of the movies I left off this list. Like I just can't give it anything better than that. Um, yeah, I totally forget i mean i don't remember half the movies that i saw this year either but this one was definitely one that i definitely remember don't remember you talking about but um, that's the thing even when i looked at my notes for old mm -hmm. episodes i could remember most of the movies couldn't tell you this was on the list this yeah. is like completely like i have no idea what this movie was even about that's, and that's the impact it had on me like of your of your bottom five i definitely remember you talking about and having meaningful like discussions about those bottom five that one not so much no i don't remember yeah. it at all it's just gone so my fifth worst movie of the year was blacklight uh travis block is a government operative coming to terms with his shadowy past when he discovers a plot targeting u.s citizens block finds himself in the crosshairs of the fbi director he once helped protect um, I'm in a very similar situation with this movie as with you were with uh, The Cursed. Mm -hmm. um, not that I don't remember seeing the movie. I don't remember the movie at all. Like, mm -hmm. I don't remember the plot at all to this movie. I, I, all I remember is there was something about a news reporter that Liam Neeson's trying to, to like help save or something and like he's on the run from the fbi which was previously hired him as a sh like a shadow agent I, other than that i have no idea what this movie was about um i went into it hoping it was just another good liam neeson type action thriller and i was just so disappointed um and i think that just goes to show like how many action thrillers Liam Neeson actually does and that are actually good hmm. um, because I actually wanted to look at his like list of like movies that he's done uh, recently 
It's probably and not a lot. <laughs> it, no, he's done a lot. He did not a lot of good things. Oh, I mean. right, yeah. I've I've seen some talk about this kind of. He did four talk. movies within 2021 and 2022, and I only saw one of them. But like, they're all kind of the same. And I remember talking about this too when I, when I was talking about it. He he plays and portrays the same character in all of his movies ever since Taken. Yeah, and. I guess they've just gone like stale because mm-hmm. like he's got a lot of these movies that are like Memory and Blacklight and The Ice Road, The Marksman, Cold Pursuit. Mm-hmm. That's all within the last four years. Yeah. And they're all the same type of movie. The Commuter. I remember that one. That one was bad too. Mm-hmm. And it's just really, really upsetting because like after he did Taken – and even Taken 2 was okay. Like, Taken 2 was good, but Taken 3 was just awful. Yeah. Um, and then he did uh, – what was that other one that he did that I really liked? Um, that was Phantom after t- No, no. <laughs> it was um, – It was. At, I think it was in between ta- – oh, The Gray, mm-hmm. uh, where he's, like, stranded out in the wilderness and has to fight wolves. That's oh, a great yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, like – a lot of the movies that he's done that's in this similar style of movie is just no like yeah. we got to stop <laughs> it's time to it's time to put this down helium time mm-hmm. to do some more i don't know the roles more fitting of your age <laughs> yeah um uh, my next movie is uh resident evil raccoon city welcome to raccoon city once the booming home of pharmaceutical giant umbrella corp The company's exodus left the city a wasteland, a dying town with great evil brewing below the surface. When that evil is unleashed, a group of survivors must work together to uncover the truth behind Umbrella and make it through this night. This movie also fell on the unforgettable end of the spectrum for me, um, partially kind of due to how it feels. Like, I I, I said at the time, this feels very reminiscent of the 2005 Dune movie. Doom movie. And how they were trying to capture, like, that video game movie aesthetic and failed mm-hmm. horrifically. Because they, most of the characters were entirely emotionless and just had, like, no nothing, in, no, there was no charisma behind them. This movie fell into a similar hole. Like, if you told me this was from around the same time period, I would have believed you. Because there's just nothing to these characters. I can't even remember any of their names. Um, I don't even remember most of the plot of this movie because it's just forgettable, bland, boring, just nothing more to it. Which is weird for a franchise like Resident Evil, which from the vid- from what I've heard of the video games has a very interesting little story that ties it all together. Um, it, it had like this almost, and going back to the video game feel, it had almost like this cutscene feel to it. Where like there were certain parts where I felt like I was watching a cutscene and it would cut to, it was felt like it was building to cut to like the actual gameplay. And just never did. Which maybe could have worked in a better movie, but certainly not this one. And said, oh, I really got with a lot of lame effects, especially with the zombies, which is part of why I'm saying it feels like it's from 2005. The effects were terrible. Especially, which is actually a common theme um, in the next few movies about the effects. Like, they just, in 2022, you got to actually put some money into making your effects look good. Because we're kind of spoiled for movies with solid effects. Like, with all the Marvel movies that come out, most things these days, like you get good effects on screen. So unless you're willing to match that, like your film's gonna look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and there's ways around that. Like you could do practical effects. There's like there's still avenues to approach, or you could just make a smaller movie that doesn't rely on all these big effects, but tells the same kind of story. But instead, they're just trying to have their cake and eat it too, and they're failing miserably at both. So uh, this, oh, also it fell extremely flat on the comedy horror. This was like, I don't know what they were trying to do here. It wasn't very funny and it wasn't very scary. It just fell, uh, it's again, like, what am I watching? Like, what, what are you trying to do with any of this? It's nonsensical. So I, again, it's it's one of those where it's just like, why why did this get made? What, like, mm. what were you trying to do here? Because I feel like there was some sequel bait towards the end, but you didn't leave enough to get to a sequel you know Mm -hmm. you didn't give me you didn't get me interested in this as a franchise which is probably why we haven't seen another one or heard any reminiscing of announcements for one yet so yeah this definitely takes the cake for number four this was a garbage movie that i saw at the start of last year and i am so glad it flopped 
It's it's unfortunate because um, the original like Resident Evil movies, from what I remember, they did fairly well. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not what... maybe not like um, critic wise, but th- they were definitely a better movie than like this one that that got put out. Yeah. Um, it, it also depends, though, because I've heard a lot towards the latter half of that mm-hmm. series that it just went. It yeah. just went to shit. It just stopped making sense and just, my favorite word, became nonsensical. And it's unfortunate because, like, um, they're trying to make video games into movies, and it's not working uh, with it a just, lot yeah. of these. Like, um, Mortal Kombat, I thought, was okay. Uh, but this the Resident Evil series, no, and no. and th- the closest what's... I think we've gotten, honestly, is Sonic, and that's not saying much because yeah. there's not really much to those movies. And I'm I'm holding out hope um, that the the and this isn't a movie; it's a show. But The Last of Us dropped its first uh, episode this past mm-hmm. weekend, and according to Rotten Tomatoes, it's the highest rated sh- uh, video mm-hmm. game production ever. Mm-hmm. So hopefully HBO, mm. uh, like other like um, production companies can take from what HBO is doing with, with this game and this show and hopefully put it into other stuff. Because I would like to see other games made into sh- uh, shows or, or movies. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically like Bioshock would be a great like movie or a TV show or, um, mm-hmm. or I mean, redo Assassin's Creed and make it better. Because that, that movie was terrible. I mean, I feel like if you're going to do a video game movie, because I feel like this is a pit, common pitfall these people try to keep falling into, where it's like you're trying to retell the events of the story from the game, and you're not expanding on it any further. Mm-hmm. Just tell a story in the universe. Like, there's mm-hmm. so much these there's so much these video games. Like, Resident Evil, I know, has a lot. Like, there's, what, like nine games in this series? Yeah. Uh, there's so many different kinds eight. of stories. Something like that. I yeah. don't know. There's so many different worlds and like different mm-hmm. views to tell a story through, but instead you're trying to follow the main storyline of all yeah. these games. There's no point in that, and I think that's part of the reason why the Sonic movie is honestly is was one of the best ones I've seen so far. They didn't try to do that; they're just telling a movie with Sonic. Like that works. You don't have to follow anything. You don't. Have, there's no precedent to follow. You're just making your own thing using yep. these characters from the games. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe that's the last of us is doing. Regardless, I wish them the best because I think television is a much better medium for this than trying to do it in a movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My uh, fourth worst movie of the year Mm -hmm. is a movie called Infinite Storm. When a climber gets caught in a blizzard, she encounters a stranded stranger and must get them both down the mountain before nightfall. Um, This made my bottom five mainly because... I thought it was going to be a different movie than what it actually was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought this was going to be a type of movie that I really enjoy, which is a natural disa- a natural disaster type of story similar to Everest. Um, Everest was a movie about Mount Everest. They're climbing up Mount Everest, and some people get stranded, and some people don't make it, and it was really thrilling and, and fun to watch. Granted, people died, but... This one was so slow in, in in how it progressed throughout the the movie. And it was just this I was so disappointed with how slow it moved in in the survival type of story that it was. Uh especially because um it it came it's a true story that came from my backyard hometown uh of the White Mountains in New Hampshire. So I was like, "Oh, uh, I think it was Naomi Watts or something who starred in this movie uh, or Nicole Kidman or one of the two. Um, but I was like, oh, she's going to be in it. It's going to be great. It's going to be like a survival type of like uh, like a escape from the elements type of movie. No, it was way more slow than that. And it never just really like pulled me in as um, a survival type of story. It just felt like two people going on a hike in the middle of the night and it's cold and that's it. And I was like, yeah. I was real disappointed about it. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, 
Sometimes you wish these movies really just had a little bit more to them. Like, yeah. they're really just something. Because there are some times when, like, a movie like this can function on its own legs. Mm-hmm. Or it's just, like, a solemn trip between two people. But you also need a little bit more in there than it's just a true story. Like, you need yeah. a little bit more to it. Like, there needs to be chemistry between the characters. Or, like, there's some kind of... There's something more going on here. Something. Mm-hmm. But it's just the examples like this or it's just, like... It's not like a trek between two people, like, figuring themselves out along the way. It's just survival. And that can't fall flat on its own, which is unfortunate. Okay, so getting into my number three. This is a movie that I'm so surprised to dot on Andrew's list, because we both, we both hated this movie. We, we fought, and when this came out, I remember how angry we were at this movie. This was, like... Looking back this on was it... insane. Looking back on it... I think I liked it more than some of these other movies that are on my list. And that's why it's not on my top five or bottom gotcha. five. Um, Could not just because it's, it was a cool premise. Like the two, the beginning two thirds of the movie was a cool premise. Mm. Um, you know, the, the earth, you know, Oh, you haven't even introduced the movie. So yeah, if, for me, it felt a bit outdated. Um, but the, this the movie is the Roland Emmerich classic, uh, Moonfall. The world stands on the brink of annihilation when a mysterious force knocks the Earth from its orbit and sends it hurtling towards a collision course with Earth. With only weeks before impact, NASA executive Jocinda Joe Fowler teams up with a man from her past and a conspiracy theorist for an impossible mission into space to save humanity. This movie is another movie that feels like it should have come out 20 years ago. Because mm. it's this is like a this is like Independence Day. If this had come out like after Independence Day, people would have lost their minds. But Instead, we have proof that, as as a concept, special effects no longer sell movies. Because there definitely was a time when this was the case, like with Avatar. Movies that had such good special effects that you just gotta go see it. It's just amazing. Like, there's nothing else like it out there. But like I said earlier, special effects are just like, like this are just so, cool, so common nowadays. Every movie has good special effects. If you don't have special effects, it's noticeable. <laughs> like, so when you get something like this, where all there is to it is the special effects, it's going to fall flat on its ass. And that's pretty much what happened. Like, I don't understand what they were trying to do here. Like, did they really think the good effects of this movie would, like, sell it to audiences? We've had, like, Endgame. Like, you've seen, like, the most amazing effects you can put on screen. Like, that's not going to do it anymore, especially when we have a, a nonsensical story, actors who just, like, don't seem to care that they're there and are very clearly just collecting a check like filmmaking that just doesn't make sense and an inconsistent world like this all this together isn't making a movie that i want to watch it's making a gigantic mess like and like i said at the time this story felt like the first draft of a sophomore film major Hmm. like this felt like something i would have wrote or read at the time not knowing any better and somehow it feels like nobody told whoever wrote this hey maybe you should do some work on this because it kind of doesn't make any sense and instead they didn't so now we have this mess to work with i don't know the, like i said this one didn't seem like it had a very consistent internal logic that kind of made everything work which i think might have helped it in the long run make me like it a little bit more if things were kind of made sense but instead we get this like all over the place natural disaster story that also has aliens in it that also has ancient alien stuff in it that just like you're watching it come on screen it's like somebody's barfing out all these ideas that they had and like i don't know it's like it's like group people got high and wrote a movie <laughs> and no. you're just finding out of all about this now now i haven't seen any of the movies uh since i watched them the first time but like for this one i would go back and try to try to watch it again um just because the, like I was saying, the first two thirds of this movie I thought were interesting. It's a cool mm-hmm. concept. The Earth, the Earth um, loses its gravitational pull on the Moon, and the Moon starts falling towards the Earth. That's a cool concept for a for a disaster movie. Mm-hmm. Now, where it lost me was when the Moon is actually a spaceship that yeah. was designed by aliens that are actually Earth's early ancestors. Yeah, that's where it lost me completely, and See, I was like, this movie. Sucks. It lost me way before that just because Mm -hmm. the way the world functioned didn't make sense. Like, even Mm. just with how the disasters kind of, like, worked, it didn't feel right. Like, it just Mm. did. 
didn't make sense especially if you remember that one scene with the rocket ship i think where like it's trying to outrun i can't remember what it's trying to do it's outrunning like a tidal wave or it like was there's... the gravitational pull That's of it. the earth was too strong yeah so when the rocket was trying to go up it wasn't it wasn't getting off the ground because of gravity Which and the tidal no wave sense. was coming in <laughs> i mean it was a cool visual effect, but like... But we get cool visual effects all the time. That's not enough to make me want to watch this. I know. Also, I do want to get touch on the ancient alien topic because I feel like that's also something that feels like a relic from 20 yeah. years ago. Where, like, in a world where, like, we have people who think, like, 5G towers are causing the coronavirus and that vaccines are population control, maybe we shouldn't have a protagonist who is a conspiracy theorist that was proven right on all this. Like... That feels very outdated and not like not up to snuff. I think I remember you t- saying that. Uh, yeah, and it's still at the I time. Feel, I feel like it rings even more true now. Yeah, <laughs> with the past year, so like I, we don't need more people stoking the flames like that. It's already bad enough as is. Don't make a movie where they're one of your protagonists. <laughs> it's just it's just not good timing for any of that. So. Again, I am so surprised this is not higher on your list because this was a dog trash movie. <laughs> this was bottom of the barrel, just like absolute garbage that will be forgotten about, hopefully, in a year or two. Um, my third and second are actually two of the more popular franchises mm. in um, this day and age in movies. Uh, my third, however, we'll start there, is Fantastic Beasts, Secrets of Dumbledore. <laughs> Professor Albus Dumbledore must assist Newt Scamander and his partners as Grindelwald begins to lead an army to eliminate all muggles. Other than the first Fantastic Beasts movies, the series is entirely forgettable. I'm pretty sure the second movie is like the worst of the three, but this one is easily up there in like bad movies. Um, it's it's similar to it's like a reverse fan uh, uh, like um, um, like new trilogy Star Star Wars, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, like the the eight nine and ten or seven eight and nine. The first one was good. It was okay. Mm-hmm. Second one complete trash. Third one why. Like, this is exactly how it felt like. And that's how it felt like with a lot of these trilogies. Like, you don't get trilogies like this, any, like like the Lord of the Rings anymore. You don't get, like, a, I would say Jurassic Park. But the third Jurassic Park movie was completely awful. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sh- – and I'm, I'm also pretty sure that I fell asleep during this movie. Because I, I don't understand how it fits into the wizarding world. I understand that it's a complete different story from Harry Potter, but Dumbledore's in it. Like the one of the main wizards from Harry Potter is in this movie, and I'm pretty sure he was in the second movie for a little bit too. Um and it's just like I don't understand the story. Like I understand you know, the Elder Wand and all this stuff and, and all that sort of stuff. But it's like you're following a new group of characters. Why don't we see more of like outside of like Dumbledore stuff? Like mm-hmm. I want to see more of like different things in the wizarding world rather than like the traditional uh, group of wizards that I've already seen previously before. It kind of suffers from the Star Wars problem in that aspect, where for it does. some reason everything has to connect back to Tatooine. And it's like mm-hmm. it doesn't. Yep. It really doesn't. Like, well, I don't know why you keep doing that, but. And I don't know where I heard it, and I don't know if it's true, but I thought I saw somewhere that they're gonna try to like reboot Harry Potter, which would be crazy Wild. because yeah. they haven't. Those have movies haven't even been out that long, and I mean they've been out for yeah. like 20, 22 years, but like. Yeah. Well, the, when, when did the last one come out? Because 2015, I think. Yeah, even so, that's not that long ago in the grand scheme yeah, no. of things. Nope. So, like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe because they want to like update it with like better special effects or something. But then, the, then or update gotta... the di- or update the parks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Or they're trying to just like money grab at that point. But I, yeah. but I don't know. This movie just fell flat. Like like mm-hmm. I said. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep during this movie because I don't remember like the second half of the second mm-hmm. act. So I don't yeah. even remember like all these movies uh, other than 
there's a couple of them where I'm like, okay, I remember seeing this. But like mm-hmm. most of these movies, like at the bottom of my list, they're just movies where I'm just like, what was this about? <laughs> like, what happened? See, it's interesting you measure, mention that because my the bottom of my list is very different. I remember mm. all these movies and I hate these movies with a passion. Moonfall was the start of that. Um, though the next movie up, which I think is the most egregious real movie on this list. And I'll get to the reason why I say real movie when I talk about my number one. But my number two, which really feels like the worst real movie on this list, is Firestarter. Which was a surprise when I saw it, because I was not expecting this to be this bad. Mm. A couple desperately tried to hide their daughter, Charlie, from a shadowy federal agency that wants to harness her unprecedented gift for turning fire into a weapon of mass destruction. Her father taught her how to defuse her power, but as Charlie turns 11, the fire becomes harder and harder to control. When a mysterious operative finally finds the family, he tries to seize Charlie once and for all. But she has other plans. This movie is so strange to me. Because there are parts where it feels like a real movie, if you catch Mm. my drift. Specifically with the cinematography. And it's so strange because it will go, it will literally cut from really good shots that are decently composed to what looks like a freshman film student's first film. And it's like in the same scene, back Mm. to back. I don't know how you can look at like, I just don't know how that can happen. Like, how can you look at one shot and think, this is this is pretty good, this is fantastic, and then cut to the worst shit I've ever seen in my entire life? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And especially this is confusing to me because this is a Stephen King book. Not to say that all of his adaptations are good, but we had it. Like, that was a very recent example of a good adaptation of one of his books. So mm-hmm. I'm so confused as to what happened here to make an absolute dumpster fire of a movie, no pun intended. It's incredibly boring, especially considering the source material. Like, it just feels like nothing ever happens. Even though she's, like, going around burning people. Even though, like, they have this quote-unquote shadowy organization changing, chasing them. Nothing ever feels like it's going anywhere. It's just, it feels like we're dealing with the same stuff over and over again. Especially with how, like, the child endangerment in this movie. Which is a very consistent theme with the parents seemingly just not knowing how to take care of their child or how to deal with her as a person because they're constantly leaving her in situations where like all of a sudden they come back and she's burned a cat in front of them this happens like three times three or four times in the movie where there's like we're gonna leave you and we're gonna go do something else blah 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 oh no a cat's dead it's like what what did you think would happen you've seen this happen three times before nobody learns a lesson in this movie it's all just the same mistakes repeated over and over again, which is egregious because they're not growing as people. They're staying the exact same characters from start to end. It just it just doesn't make any sense. The, the actors, the, their performances are just god awful. This is another movie where it felt like somebody told the, pe- the actors just to not act and just to give the most monotone, boring performances possible. The, the, I'm talking like Phantom Menace kind of bad, which I've talked oh, about shit. before. I have a whole, I've got a whole theory on that that's my own thing additionally for a plot that feels big and has like potential to be big the world feels so small and unlived in like it's basically just this family and this like shadow organization that feels like it's run and by a single person Mm. and that's like that's who we're kind of dealing with here like there's it feels like there should be more of a world to this because these are people who have superpowers it feels like they didn't like I don't know, we'd at least get more about their past or, like, we'd see some examples of other people with, like, exact abilities kind of like this in the world, but we don't. It's just them, and it's just this random woman, and it feels so dead and stale and boring, and it's like, again, how are you thinking, how does anyone think this is a good idea? Like, you're not giving me anything that makes me want to watch this further. Not to mention all of the atrocious effects that are in this movie, because this is another example of a movie that just... Like, like, if you don't have good effects, what are you doing? <laughs> like, why are you trying to have these big scenes where, like, she's burning people into ash or, like, this, like, these massive explosions that are going on? It's just, it looks like somebody did this in After Effects, like, for, like, a high school project. I just, it just doesn't make sense to me how these movies keep getting these decently sized budgets and they're just, like, squandering them. 
Mm-hmm. It just because I've seen examples where this is good. Like I've seen movies that work well on a small budget. It's just that I, I don't know. I guess nobody cares. Like <laughs> nobody cares what they're making. They're just here for the paycheck, and that's it. But, I mean, good for you, but you made a piece of shit again. So I this is such a confusing movie for me. I don't understand how it got made. I don't understand how some of this feels so confident and other parts of it just feel absolutely like nobody gave a shit it really is the 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 realest bad movie on this list for me i just i just i i can't understand it i just simply cannot understand what i watched if i remember correctly too the original firestarter wasn't that great either yeah i don't know with i don't know if Drew this Barrymore. is a problem with the source material maybe i've never seen the original firestarter so i can't mm. comment on that all I can comment on is that it seems like, at least story-wise, there's a movie here. Yeah. Like, I, we've seen something like this with Marvel, right? Don't they have, like, their Young Mutants or whatever? Like, they uh, try New Mutants, New yeah. New Mutants. They try I, to do something I like haven't, this. I didn't see it. But I think there's a story here. There's clearly a story about an organization that hunts down special kids. Mm-hmm. That sounds like something I could watch. That sounds like something I'd be interested in. And instead, we see all this potential squandered on a movie that just... Yeah, the new mutants just doesn't do anything. Better, just doesn't apparently. Anymore. But yeah, that's <laughs> you know that's when you're talking. You know you're talking about this movie. You know what made me think of what uh, was that like evil Superman movie, Brightburn. I also heard that was awful. Yeah, <laughs> which I, is I've heard, also wild to it, me because it seems like such a good concept. I think it was better than Firestarter, but I would hope so. Firestarter, um, was, yeah, I that looks like a movie either. that was put together at least. This just yeah. looked like. This was a dumpster fire. Well, going off of the superhero track, um, apparently it's not a list of mine Mm -hmm. if a Marvel movie is not included. And this also includes the worst of list Mm -hmm. because my second worst movie of the year is Morbius. (laughs) I forget this is a Marvel movie. <laughs> Biochemist Michael Morbius tries to cure himself of a rare blood disease, but he inadvertently affects, infects himself with a form of vampirism instead. Man. It was going not back, time for you. <laughs> going back and thinking about this movie. I forgot how bad jared leto's acting was in this movie and i'm pretty sure i commented on that a lot and that was like one of my main grievances with this movie and mind you this is a movie that i saw a year ago because it came out in january of last year Mm -hmm. so forgive me if i miss am you know misinformed but um it's also another movie that i'm pretty confident i fell asleep in so like i don't know if I was just tired at the time or if I was just like, you know, exhausted from being at work for so long uh, and and at school. But. Or if these movies are just bad, and I'm just going to go with they were just bad. Could just be bad. Um, it didn't fit with any other Marvel Universe property, whether it was MCU, whether it was Sony verse, whether it was something else it felt like it was going it was a standalone marvel property similar to like blade when blade came out in the 90s but it tried to be like fit itself in like it tried to wedge itself into like the marvel universe um because i'm pretty sure at the end and this movie's been out for a year so like i'm pretty sure at the end of the movie um they made it seem like uh, the multiverse was cracking in his world too, in Morbius's world, and then Vulture appeared, like from the first sp- from Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yeah. Like Michael Keaton's Vulture was huh. like, "Let's team up," and I'm like, "What? What? What? Why?" At least by like, dinner first. <laughs> yeah, and and I was like, and the other thing too is like I'm very very much done with Mm -hmm. the anti-heroes trying to be heroes yeah um because that's what this movie like like i'm pretty sure i talked about this at the time too is is morbius is a villain he's a spider-man villain Mm -hmm. he 
does become an anti-hero later but i want to see the villain story first i want to if they were to make this movie properly what they should have done is they should have made it a horror movie yeah and made it all about him trying to maintain control over his villainous side but instead they made it turn into he's got uh, another like a friend who also has a rare this rare blood disease and he wants to be cured too so he also becomes a vampire and then they have to fight each other and then he ends up like trying to save people because he's trying to be the good guy mm-hmm. but then at the end of the movie when vulture was like let's team up and he was like what did you have in mind so it's like are you a villain or are you a hero i'm very confused i find it so um, strange they're so averse to like giving a villain their movie like i i feel like it'd be a very almost freeing experience in a way because we've had so many marvel films that are about the hero itself and doing heroic things why not actually like cut loose and like oh that would be like a good villains movie because i I don't know about you i love playing the villain and things i find it very fun Mm -hmm. it's very freeing because you can do stuff you wouldn't normally do and and kind of experience that side of it venom kind of like strayed that line but he was definitely more like but it was more of like eddie's trying to control uh, or trying to keep venom under control um but no i like all i want and i saw black adam recently uh it was on hbo going into the like anti-hero super villain stuff and black adam is a villain Mm -hmm. of he's supposed to be a villainous character that's his role why am I watching a movie about a guy who acts like a villain? And then at the end of the movie, he's like, well, I'm just going to be uh, nice now. Like, no, stop being nice. Like, <laughs> I almost wonder, because if I recall correctly, Dwayne The Rock Johnson plays Black Adam, yes. right? I know yes. he has something in his contract that says he's not allowed to be the villain and he's not allowed to lose a fight anymore. So that might be part of it. I mean, he, well if you want to talk about that kind of stuff at this Mm -hmm. point then we'll talk about the dc stuff Mm -hmm. uh they've actually all been let go (laughs) like warner brothers let oh my gosh so (laughs) henry like so henry cavill announced he was coming back as superman after black adam he's been released from ww uh from w wb i almost said wait is that what he left the witcher for or is that a different thing he no he left the witcher for something else okay i was like but, that is be so tragic yeah but he, so he's uh so he got he got canned by wb ben yeah. affleck's gone as batman mm-hmm. gal gadot's gone as wonder woman uh jason momoa's gone as aquaman even though he has a movie coming out this year and dwayne the rock wow. johnson has been released by wwe as black adam the only person that I don't think has been released yet is Ezra Miller, and he has legal problems. Like so, like why hasn't he been released? But he also yeah. has a movie coming out this year. Um, so yeah, they're they're going through like uh, they're going through like a whole new restructure. James Gunn is, and yeah. actually, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, and Gal Gadot are actually I think in the process of suing Warner Brothers because Damn. they they were promised movies and they canceled other or they denied other properties because they were promised these movies and now they're not going to get them yeah uh which is unfortunate but anyway going back to my rant about villains and like they just need to make a villain you know what's the you know what's a really good one that i just realized Mm -hmm. the joker with uh walking phoenix they did that was that was was a a great was it walking phoenix yes it was Walking yeah solid movie like solid move solid village villain origin story didn't portray himself as a hero at the end. Yeah. Was also a straight did, up villain. Didn't really have much to do with being the Joker until the very end. No. Like it and, didn't need to do that. And I don't think technically he's the Joker. No. He's just not. whatever. That's just what they were going as. Yeah. Uh, because it takes place so far in, in the past from, you know, Bruce Wayne and everything. But that kind of villain origin perfect i love it yeah but the problem is with these anti-heroes is they're anti-heroes so they're trying to be good guys too yeah. like the only other one that i can think of is um that were movies were the punisher movies while they were terrible movies mm-hmm. um punisher was never really seen as a hero he was always killing 
And that's what I want from these villain stories. But we're not going to get them. So. No. And which is unfortunate. Yep. <sighs> okay. So I was referencing earlier that um, Firestarter is my last real movie on this list because mm-hmm. I don't think the mo- this my number one worst movie of the year. I don't think that actually counts as a movie. <laughs> and I'm going to get into why I don't think it counts as a movie in a little bit. But my number one, the worst movie that I saw was <sighs> Spirit Halloween. <laughs> Locked inside a store on Halloween night, three middle school friends encounter an angry spirit that possesses creepy animatronic commercial characters. This isn't a movie. This just isn't a movie. This is an hour and a half long commercial for Spirit Halloween. There's just no plot here whatsoever. Not not a plot that you could care about. The plot is supposed to be a dude comes along and curses like this orphanage. And so this woman actually curses him and forces him to live on this spot and resurrect once a year to maybe take over somebody's body, though I don't know why she would do that. That doesn't make any (laughs) sense. And then his house gets built over a spirit Halloween, gets built under a spirit Halloween. And then kids get trapped inside there and they're kind of harassed by him for an hour and a half. It just... It's just a commercial for Spirit Halloween. That's all this is. I don't know why they spent a couple million dollars on this and they could have made more commercials for Spirit <laughs> Halloween because that's all this feels like. Because mm. all, all we're getting is stuff from inside there. We're seeing the kids play around inside of Spirit Halloween. We're seeing the ghost take over animatronics from a Spirit Halloween. It's like showing off the family of products for Spirit Halloween. <laughs> it's like this is a movie. And you can tell they're also putting in the least possible effort into this as well. Because they're capitalizing on all this other garbage around it, too. Like, they're clearly trying to pull a Stranger Kids thing. Mm -hmm. They've got three kids that are fighting this weird being that's beyond their understanding. Um, And they're all playing into these tropes of, like, being the leader, the moody one, the smart, funny one. Like, that are very clearly just the Stranger Things kids. Like, that's what you're doing. I can see it. They're even riding bikes in the beginning like them. Very classically like that. It's like, you're not fooling anyone. I know exactly what's going on here. So it's not only incredibly lazy in that regard, the special effects were atrocious, especially by 2022 standards. I'm talking like you can see the mouse cursor moving like a spirit orb across the screen bad. Like it's like high school project bad. Like what are you, how do you think you can get away with this? Like what spirit Halloween executive was watching this movie thinking, perfect, my vision's being realized right in front of me. It's like, I don't understand it. And I, it's not true. I do understand it. They're clearly trying to make a meme bad movie that'll get eyes on them and get people going into Spirit Halloweens. Except the problem is it's way too corporatized and there's nothing like actually interesting about it that makes me want to, you know, watch it again for fun. It's just boring. It's bland. There's nothing more to it. All of the characters feel incredibly unoriginal. Like I said earlier, they also just, I don't think these people knew how to write for teenagers. <laughs> Because they have them doing these nonsensical things that I know no teenager today would go to. Like, for some reason, they spend all of their time going to a puppet show. Hmm. What teenager's watching a puppet show? Like, come (laughs) on. Do they not know kids? Like, who wrote this? A 60-year-old man living out in the woods? How does that make any sense? The filmmaking... Going off that, the filmmaking was just incredibly uninspired. Cinematography is clearly very bad. The lighting was really very bad. This is definitely one of those few movies where I feel like if you put me on set, I would know how to make this better. Mm. Like, I, I would say that about a lot of these things. This one, I know exactly what I'm doing here. I, I know what I'm doing. I can make this better. Y'all people, just get off the set. Give me a camera. I'll run around for these kids and we'll make a decent movie. But it's just like, you can tell they didn't care about all about this. They were making this for money or whatever. And I sure hope they got paid well for this because this was a dumpster fire. And I just, at the end of the day, I'm still not sure why this was released. Because again, yeah. it's not bad. It, this, is the, this is how you make a so bad it's good movie. It's it's very much the, the way of the room. It has to, you have to have clearly good intentions going into that. You have to clearly want to make a good movie in order for it to be enjoyable to watch later. Because you can clearly tell like, for instance, in the room, Tommy Wiseau is trying. He is trying right. his hardest to be a good actor 
and also a good filmmaker. And it's funny because he's not. He's none of those things. And he doesn't care. It's it's hilarious. You can tell these people probably had some talents. But they just didn't give a shit. Like, they didn't care about making this movie. Nobody cared about making this movie. This is a movie made in order to capitalize on people wanting to go to Spirit Halloween or whatever before the, the holiday season started. So, uh, this commercial is honestly one of the worst things. I've seen it in a very long time. Might not even be just this year. This might be a mul- This might be in the last few years. Hmm. I don't think anything comes as close to as bad as Spirit Halloween. Yeah, that one um, surprisingly got a better critic score. It's actually the best critic score of... Nope, it's not. It's your second best critic yeah. score of your bottom five, it, which is th- which very baffles surprising. Me. Baffles me. I don't know which critics are rating this movie, but they need to get their fucking eyeballs checked. I don't think we watch the same movie. Because I, lo- I love movies that are really bad and really funny. Like, I, mm-hmm. I can enjoy movies like that. This is not one of them. This is just bad. <sighs> now, we're talking about bad movies. Yeah, not commercials, unfortunately. Um, apparently, critics liked my worst movie of 2022 <laughs> at an 87% score. But it is my worst mm-hmm. audience rating. And that's The Card Counter. <laughs> And if you remember from previous yes. my previous uh, discussions about this movie, uh, you will remember that I didn't even finish the movie. No. I turned it off with 30 minutes left. So Redemption is the long game in Paul Schrader's The Card Counter. Yeah. Told with Schrader's trademark cinematic intensity. Okay. Their revenge this the revenge thriller tells the story of an ex-military interrogator turned gambler haunted by the ghost of his past. Mm. While this movie did not officially come out in 2022, I did see it in 2022, and it totally deserves worst movie of 2022. <laughs> there is still, like I said, 30 minutes remaining on it under my HBO account. And I will not finish it. <laughs> and it this, shall remain there till the day you die. <laughs> for anyone who doesn't remember what this movie was about, it was about a gambler, which I like gambling movies. They kind of fall into that category of like the natural disaster movies. Like I like a good gambling movie. 21 is a fantastic gambling movie. <laughs> uh, the Hangover, while it's not a gambling movie, has gambling elements to it. It's pretty good. It's pretty funny. This movie was terrible. Um, It was about a guy who's a poker player. He's a gambler. And he's an, like I said, he's an ex-military interrogator. And when I say ex-military interrogator, I mean he was an ex-military interrogator with the group of people from Iraq that got in trouble Mm -hmm. for... (laughs) Oh, these people. (laughs) Yeah. For okay. torturing the, uh, the, their their captives, uh, which is a which is a true story. It's a you know it's a real thing that happened. Yeah. A group of army army interrogators were caught with pictures of them terrorizing and abusing and uh, harassing these these uh, these captives, and they took that story and made it a part of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> which is insane which is the craziest thing ever because there's no like this movie was so all over the place it would go from gambling to backstory to gambling to backstory to separate backstory and it was just so hard to follow i was it was so weird and like he's got this like oscar isaac's got this this part in it where he goes to hotel rooms and he has to wrap everything in sheets. It's like everything in the hotel room when he gets there is wrapped in white sheets. Mm-hmm. The desk, the, the 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 table side, bedside tables, the bed is wrapped in a white sheet. It's just the most bizarre thing. And I can't I can understand I can I guess I can understand why critics liked it so much and why audiences didn't. Because I mean, I'm not a critic. 
But like, I'm yeah. definitely part of the audience, and this movie sucks. <laughs> this is the only one of my bottom five where mm-hmm. I did not agree with the critic score, and I completely agreed with audience score because mm-hmm. I could not follow this movie. It jumped all over the place randomly. It was way too crazy, and uh, there's still 30 minutes left, and I don't think I'm ever gonna finish watching it. And like. Like there was thirty minutes left, and they were they were like, <laughs> one of the characters is trying to plan like a revenge killing on this on Willem Dafoe for some like Willem, <gasps> Willem Dafoe's Dafoe. in this movie. Yeah, so he's he was like the head interrogator, and like mm-hmm. this character's dad killed himself, and he was trying to plot this revenge fantasy on Willem Dafoe's character and he was trying to recruit this other guy who was a part of his his this kid's dad's unit and I was and and like 30 minutes left in the movie and they haven't even gotten to the revenge part of it yet mm-hmm. so I don't even know like where it was going to come in or if it was going to come in but I, I I'm not gonna finish it like if anyone else has finished this movie let me know if the ending is worth <laughs> it and then maybe I'll go back and finish it oh, maybe it's the only movie I didn't finish this this year, mm-hmm. and it's it's one of the only movies I never finished at all. Like I'm usually yeah. pretty good about about finishing movies, and like today today I watched um, that Netflix movie, um, uh, uh, Spiderhead, with with uh, Miles Teller and Chris Hemsworth. No idea what you're um, talking about. Yeah, I, it was a movie that was like heavily like advertised on Netflix and stuff like last year when it came out, and I saw I saw the trailer and I was like, this looks good. And then I saw the synopsis today and I was like, when I started it and I was like, ooh, this might not be good. Oh no! And then I was watching it and I was like, I really don't want to watch this movie anymore. And but I was like, you know what? I'll stick it out. And I stuck it out. The card counter? No. I'm not going to stick it out. I'm not going back to it. It's going to live on my HBO Mm -hmm. at two thirds of the way through forever. And that's Mm -hmm. that. It's not worth it. Best to leave it in 2022. And I don't know about you, but I feel so much better now that we've cleaned house on 2022 and all the absolute trash that we no longer have to think about in 2023. And we're Especially three... with some of the movies that are coming out in I know. the coming weeks, because I don't know about you, um, I've been very excited that we've skipped a lot of January, because now that means we get to talk about the good stuff of January, and I saw, a good stuff in January? I saw a particularly good movie last week. I don't know if you've seen Puss in Boots. Uh, um, did that come out this year? It, it came, came out it last came out, year, right? I think, I think it came, I thought it came out sometime in January. Regardless, I did see it this year, and I will be talking it was... about it on next week's episode, because... That movie was phenomenal. <laughs> it was last year. It was last year. I'm still talking it about it. That was a I good know, movie. It was, it was uh, I think it was like late December. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or something. Like December. Yeah. December 21st. Yeah. Yeah. It's late December. Basically. Yeah. Basically counts as 2023. So, cause I, I'm, I'm glad like we're eight, we're three weeks into 2023 yes. and I haven't seen a single new movie other than Spiderhead. Yeah. Um, but there's just been no movies that have come out <laughs> that I'm, interested in 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 going over and maybe since you're reviewing a movie from 2022 actually from december 21st of 2022 i will also review a movie that came out around december 21st 2022 because we have yet to talk about avatar way of the water oh and i still haven't seen it yet (laughs) i wasn't planning on seeing it actually so you're more than welcome to it if you want to see avatar from what i've heard it's really good yeah (laughs) um not Very, better, yeah. not better than like the original Avatar, but from what no. I've heard, it's it's um it's pretty good. Well, um, here's hoping it is. So me too. I'm so. pretty happy with Puss in Boots. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so look forward to next week because I'm coming in hot next week with my my review. Um, but I think we'll leave. I think we'll leave 2022 on that note for now. Andrew, do you have anything you want to plug before we go? <laughs> Um, no, but I was, I was just looking at like the upcoming films for, um, 2023 and, and I remember spoil too much. We no. don't want to talk about next week. I actually, it's not a movie that I'm going to see that week. Cause there is a movie that I want to see that week. So I mm-hmm. won't spoil that one, but there's a movie coming out and I don't know if you've seen the trailers for it, but it's called 80 for Brady. And it's about a true story about four geriatric old women 
who decide to go to the Super Bowl because they want to see Tom Brady. And oh my <laughs> god. This I saw could be bad. I saw the trailer for it. I saw the trailer for it like last year mm-hmm. uh at the end of last year and I was like this is not a movie. And then they were like it's a movie. It's also based on a true story. And I was like this is not based on a true story. No, there's no way. And it is. It's based on a true story about well, four women who go to the Atlanta Falcons Patriots Super Bowl in 2017 I don't to try to see Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be seeing the M. Night Shyamalan movie. You can see oh, that no, one. Is that Knock at the Cabin? Yeah. Nah, we're gonna, we'll, we'll, get to it, we'll get to it next week. We'll get to it next week. It's not <laughs> worth talking about now. We, gotta, we don't want to bring any of that good energy to this interview. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, I don't have anything particular I want to plug, so I think no, we'll call it there. Thank you for listening to the Filmmaker's Basement. I'm Brandon. I'm Andrew. And we will see you all next time. <laughs>